My guest today is Professor Paul Ehrlich, who joins us from Stanford University, where he's a professor of biology and of population studies. And I'm going to ask him what he thinks the future of population and of extinction might look like in a post-COVID world. That's a very big question because, uh, of course, the uh, situation of the human population and the populations of our life support systems, the other organisms of the planet, are tied together very closely. Uh, and we're in the middle of a pandemic, which is tied to both, amazingly enough. In other words, the size of our population has made us extremely vulnerable uh, to epidemic disease, because the bigger the population, the bigger the chance that uh, a virus or a bacterium can transfer into our population from other animals and take hold and remain the fact that we have, because of our population size, uh, destroyed the habitats of many other organisms, particularly animals, uh, uh, larger animals. Uh, we have made the conditions much better uh, for things like rodents, which are wonderful carriers of the kinds of disease that transfer to us. And we have furthermore um, have a large population that uh, tries to extract animals from their natural habitats and put them into markets, uh, classically in China and Southeast Asia, where you have the so-called wet markets, uh, where you get everything from civet cats to pangolins to bats and so on, which are carriers of viruses that love to transfer to human beings. Uh, we're in the middle of the sixth mass extinction of the biodiversity on the planet. The only one of the six extinctions where we know exactly what the cause is. And the cause is the size and activities of the human population. And uh, we've already wiped out a very large portion of those other organisms, which are basically our life support systems. And we're paying the price of doing that, and they're paying the price equally. And what happens in the long term to biodiversity is going to depend on the course of our collapse. Um, and so what happens in our collapse is going to have a huge impact uh, on what happens to the rest of biodiversity. When you talk about possible collapse, what are the type of triggers or causes that you think of? The very basic cause is the scale of the human enterprise. That is, there are too many of us there are particularly too many rich people consuming too much, but the, our numbers uh, multiplied by how much on average we consume uh, amount to the total consumption, which is what we extract from uh, the biosphere, from our planet. Uh, and all the studies show that even with today's relatively miserable uh, standard of living around the world, whereas most people don't live like uh, the average American, uh, we're already using something on the order of two times uh, the ability of the planet to support us uh, in long term. And since many people are in misery, uh, those of us who care about the state of humanity would like to see that changed, um, both the consumption pattern and unhappily in the short term, the size of the human population. Uh, and of course, uh, we know how to deal with both consumption and population size. If we want to have a more people in the long term, we don't want to have as many people as we possibly can have in the short term to destroy our life support systems. And one excellent thing to do to start in the right direction there would be to give women full rights and responsibilities and the ability to control their bodies. Uh, that's very important, but as everybody knows, a very tough job, particularly in a country like ours where there's an ongoing war on women uh, at the moment, which is reversing much of the progress we've made. And we know perfectly well how to redistribute things and change our consumption because we learned how to do that at the start of World War II. Uh, so it's not hopeless, uh, but it's basically a political problem. What are the lessons that this moment of COVID is teaching us or, or we should learn from it? I think the COVID moment could help us learn uh, what we uh, should have learned. Uh, unhappily, we have a terrible lack of leadership 
teaching the lessons. The main lessons you see now being taught is are the discussion is how to get back to the extremely abnormal situation we were in a year ago, uh, which was in the 300,000 year history of Homo sapiens, a very abnormal time in which we were busily cutting off the limb we as a civilization are sitting on. Uh, I hope, and the thing that I will continue to do is try to persuade people that uh, we should change very rapidly. And I like the fact that a lot of young people are finally getting out there, getting under the streets and actually doing something about the racism in our society, facing the fact that we're destroying our life support systems and so on. So there's certainly hope and um, I have no choice but to keep doing what I'm doing.